Hello, welcome to Radeon RamDisk. In our prior video, we talked about the basic installation and setup. In this video, we're going to talk about advanced configuration. So, in our last video, we had just created a 4 gig RAM disk, which allowed us to have access to a brand new system disk, in this case, local disk F, which shows basically the 4 gig disk available here. Now, of course, it's empty because we just created a brand new empty disk. Um, so you can use that for any application that you would normally use a disk drive for. So you can install applications to it, whatever you'd wish to do. The important thing here, though, is to realize that a RAM disk creates the disk drive in memory. So if you were to actually stop the RAM disk or shut down your computer, this virtual disk drive F would disappear. Now, on reboot, it would create a new RAM disk, but because the contents of memory are lost, you will have a blank disk, no matter what you had saved here, which is not really desirable for every application. So, thankfully, RAM disk has some really good settings to help you get around that. So we're going to go ahead and stop the disk that we had created earlier. Now, what that does is basically removes that drive that we had just created. So I'll show you this computer again. That drive F is now gone. So we've removed that disk, and the reason I stopped it is because I want to make some changes to how this works. So what we're going to do is click on the Load and Save tab. This gives us a few settings to allow us to add permanent uh, storage to our RAM disk, so it doesn't go away when we stop the computer. And the most easy way to do that is to simply click on the Load Disk Image at Startup and Save Disk Image on Shutdown buttons. Now these are defaulting to your C drive. That's the best place to put it because that starts the quickest when you first boot up your computer, which will allow you to access whatever drive you've created very quickly in the boot process, which is important for internet temp files and for some other settings we'll get into later. So now that I've clicked those two settings, essentially what will happen is whatever the contents are of the drive that I've, I've modified during use of the product will then be saved if I were to shut down the system and will automatically reload on reboot. So I can go back to my settings tab and you'll see that everything here is grayed out. That's because it's going to collect all the settings that I had saved with the prior disk image upon reloading it. So it will know exactly what size and what format the drive is. So we're going to go ahead and start that. Um, now we're going to have it start the RAM disk, which will take a moment or two. Now it's going to say the disk image failed to load and that's a normal message. That's because we just selected load and save and we don't have an image file yet saved. So it looked for the file that we had specified in the load and save tab. It didn't find it and says I was unable to load that, which is normal. This is the first time we're launching it. Uh, on subsequent launches, after we've actually saved the image file, the um, drive letter and everything else that we've saved will be there. Also, please note that the driver has started with an unformatted disk. So regardless of whether, what settings we had here, it's defaulted to unformatted. So we're going to say OK to that. So now, it says the disk image failed to load, but the actual disk drive, the RAM disk driver, has indeed started. See, it tells us now RAM disk started successfully. So the way to determine whether that has indeed happened is to go to Disk Management. So go to your Start menu, right-click on Computer, and click on Manage. That'll pull up this window. And we're going to click on Disk Management. And because we just created a new RAM disk, it's going to say, ah, I found the disk, we need to initialize it. So we're going to go ahead and take the default settings and say OK. And down here, we will see that we've just now have visible a new unallocated disk. So it's not going to show up in my computer yet because we haven't formatted it. So what we're going to do is just right click on it and we're going to do a new simple volume and we have a wizard for that. Click next, we'll do the full size, we'll pick the default drive letter and we're going to name this RAM disk and click next and finish. Alright, so now we have a brand new disk that's now given a drive letter F. You'll remember that we had that same drive letter assigned to us before and we also have the, the autoplay dialog that comes up. So we'll close that and we'll go back over here to this menu and check and sure enough now we have RAM disk F. Now the difference between this and the prior settings was that this disk is now permanent. So if we were to shut down the computer and uh, restart it, whatever we need to do, this disk is now going to have the contents saved that we have uh, or any changes we've made to this disk. So right now it's empty. If we were to put something on it, say let's we'll just put this shortcut on there. Alright, so that shortcut is now on this drive which is all in memory. So if I were to reboot my computer, everything would shut down. This 
information would be saved to my hard drive in the location specified in the Load and Save tab. And then when I start the computer back up, it's going to go back to that location and it's going to reload this disk. So when I go back to my computer, uh, and the, when the system starts up, it's going to already have this disk in the system and with, without touching the GUI or anything else, this disk will have the contents that I've changed or created since the last boot. Now it's important to understand that as you make changes to this, um, it's always going to keep that copy saved. So um, there's a couple ways to operate this. One is you can have it just behave like a normal disk and save and load the changes you make each time. Some people like to have a set disk type that they load the same every time no matter what changes they make to it, um, which is great for development and other testing. So what you can do is actually deselect save disk image on shutdown and you can therefore keep the contents that you have exactly at this moment in time and have that come up the same each time no matter what you've added or subtracted from the directory. That's very handy for testing. And if you make some changes that you'd like to have reapplied, you can always just click the Save Disk Image Now button. So if I were to make some changes, say add another shortcut to here, um, then I can hit Save Disk Image Now. It will, sa will save those two shortcuts and no other changes we made when this thing find when you reboot this it will come back with those two files and only those so if i added a third uh file to that um it would actually not take effect after i had saved the disk image so um we're going to keep those settings there uh and basically now we have a a disk drive that behaves exactly like other disk drives in the system with the exception of it's very very fast just a quick mention of these other tabs. So we have the event log. This is designed for debug purposes. Basically, this allows you to look at any errors that Ramdisk encountered while you're using it. This is for helping uh, with the customer support. And then under options, we have um, some uh, advanced settings for people who have a very large Ramdisk, which allows them to bypass a timeout. Um, some people do not like to have a backup file uh, when we create the, uh, the backup file for Ramdisk. So um, when we're in the um, when we're in the load and save settings area here, we've specified that we're going to save this RAM disk image to this file name here on this directory. Some people don't want to have a second backup file saved, which is what RAM disk does, so that you can recover uh, any situations where maybe you accidentally hit save disk image now and go, oh no, I really wanted what was on the old disk. Well, we keep an, a RAM disk.bak image also. Some people don't want that space used up, so we've given them the option to not create that backup file. Um, we also have some compression going on, and some people don't want that. Uh, and then for privacy and security, some people like to clear RAM disk memory on exit. So it actually wipes out the memory as well. So um, for those you know, top secret uh, security guys, you actually can um, re be 100% guaranteed that even your memory is cleared uh, when you shut down your computer because due to thermal effects, uh, some people can actually take liquid nitrogen and freeze your memory to um, gain access to the contents of the memory. This will guarantee you that when you exit RAM disk, nothing exists even in the memory of the system, so there's really no way to get at the contents. Again, that's for people who are very security conscious. All right, well, that covers the basic, um, actually, the advanced features that we have in RAM disk, and we'll have further videos showing you what you can do with RAM disk uh, coming up later in the series. Thanks for listening.